bigger than maybe some people would think. I mean, one of the things that changed my life actually is reading Bobito's article in The Source, The Confessions of a Sneaker Addict. What, was 91? I thought, wow. Here's this dude in New York, and I'm not just an alien sort of dude who likes kicks. There's at least one more dude out there, and he's talking about other dudes out there who want to be fresh with their kicks. It was just a love I had for the shoes. That used to be our internet, was just looking through, through old catalogues. Part of the casual scene was a love of trainers, seeking out trainers that no one else had. They kind of emerged out of, the, I, guess, I guess, the general love of like being into trainers. I was the only person I knew that was into trainers. I didn't know any guys, anyone that was into trainers like me. Where'd you get those? What, what are they? Blah, blah, blah. It's connected to fashion, art, music. You know, all of it kind of stemmed from, from the trainers. Because there's an obsession there. It's, you know, it's connected to an obsession an addiction, whatever you want to call it. Back then, you, you, you get trainers to get the girls. There aren't as many females. It is a very male-dominated kind of world. You want to get a pair of kicks. There's a massive queue outside the store that means you can't get them. Who's in the, who's in the queue? Some of them are resellers. The sneaker brands benefit from that because it builds this hype. It's like this idea of, you know, everyone being at a release, wanting to get that shoe, sort of desperate to get that shoe. And that's what that fuels within people, that kind of idea that I will drag someone out the way or I will push in. Yeah, you know, I will treat someone badly in many ways just to, just to have that shoe. It was like a rebellion, it was like a, a, a sort of statement to say, here we are, this is what we wear. 